My name is Odi Kaspi and today I'll be talking about brand campaigns in Google Ads. Should you be running them or not? That is a question for you to answer but I'm going to try and give you uh, the tools to understand the pros and cons. So, what is a brand campaign? For the purpose of this video I'm going to be talking about brand campaigns as campaigns where you're bidding to appear for your own brand name. I'm not going to be talking about campaigns where you're a reseller of products and you're paying to appear for the brands you're selling. I think that usually makes total sense. You probably want to do that. Uh, paying to appear for your own brand name sometimes is a good thing, sometimes less so. Uh, it kind of depends on the competition and how fiercely you want to fight them. So the deciding, the main deciding factor here is how much competition you have. If you live in a world where nobody is ever advertising for any of uh, your brand terms, then you probably don't need to waste that money, um, you know, if there's absolutely zero competition. However, if you do see uh, other companies appearing when you search for your brand term or for your brand term plus the products you sell, then there's probably good reason for you to pay and appear there and, and make sure that those searches lead people to your website and not to other companies. So let's start with the cons of brand campaigns because really there is, is one con. It's a significant one, but it is that it is paid. And so you're essentially paying to appear when people search for you. If you weren't paying, probably your organic listing is going to appear on the first page probably the first listing. Uh, so unless you have a brand new website and you're not ranking for your name yet or there is some kind of uh, SEO problem with your website, we can assume that you're gonna appear when people search for your name. Uh, and, and so really you're paying Google for, um, you know, for something that is yours really. Uh, however, sometimes the competition is fierce and there are reasons to do that. So the pros of brand campaigns, be on top of the search engine result page, also known as the SERP, because it's much shorter. So often there are going to be ads above the organic listings and these ads push the organic listings way down. Sometimes there's four ads, sometimes there are shopping ads and, and search ads. And so really, uh, like in this example here, I um, don't know if you can, yeah, uh, in this example, you know, you can see that the organic listings aren't even visible on the page. You have to scroll down to see them. So I made this search for Regis, London Regis uh, do serviced offices. Uh, so you can see the first result is a competitor. The second result is a competitor. And only the third result is a paid ad for Regis. And then the organic listing would be even further down. So essentially by paying, we just made sure that they appear before I scroll down. They could probably pay more to appear above the first competitor in this case, but maybe they've done their calculation and they're happy to appear here. Okay, the other advantage of brand campaigns is you're doubling the real estate that you're taking in the SERP, in the search engine results page. Uh, in this case, Mango have paid to appear in shopping ads and they've also paid to appear in a search ad and we can't actually see the organic listing unless we scroll down. So essentially in this example we've actually tripled uh, the space they're taking because they're appearing in shopping, they're appearing in search and then they're appearing organically. Now you can see there's one competitor here, an ad by Karen Millen, um, but it kind of gets eaten up by all the mangoes and you know, um, almost lost between all those uh, mango dresses and the paid mango listing. And if you were to scroll through the page, again, you're seeing three mango instances along the height of the search engine results. Another reason for brand campaigns is longer tail brand searches. Now, what do I mean long tail? Long tail usually refers to a longer search, uh, a more specific search. So in this example, I've just searched for H&M. This is what I would call a short tail search. H&M uh, doesn't trigger any ads by competitors or by H&M themselves. Uh, and what you can see here is the organic listing, which is great. However, if I search for something more specific like an H&M black dress with puff sleeves, 
I'm going to see all these ads by other companies selling black dresses with puffed sleeves. Now, this is a great opportunity for them to show me similar products uh, that are essentially what I searched for, but from different companies. And this is a great place for H&M to, to potentially fight the corner and show me the H&M black dress with the puff sleeves that I was searching for. So in this example, I might be swayed to go and look at and potentially buy one of the other dresses because these competitors are showing me exactly what I'm looking for just from a different company. Uh, and so brand campaigns can help you um, appear for those long tail searches. Uh, and in this case, actually, this is shopping ads, so they're automatically showing the relevant product, uh, which is a good, good way to appear on brand. Cost effective, that's a pro of brand campaigns. Brand campaigns tend to be uh, very cost effective and there are several reasons for it. So when you're advertising for your own brand name, you usually get high quality scores. Um, in the example before, if I was H&M and I was advertising for H&M, Google recognizes the relevance of, of the search uh, to the landing page and the ad and gives me a high quality score. And this helps reduce the cost per click. So I'm getting cheaper cost per clicks because essentially Google recognizes high relevance and good quality. This tends to lead to very um, low cost per conversion and high returns. Uh, ROAS is return on ad spend. So typically on a brand campaign, I will usually see a return of tw times 20. So every pound I put in, I'll get times 20 or times 40 and sometimes even more. It kind of depends on the brand and how much competition there is. And so these campaigns tend to be very profitable. Now, of course, we have to take it with a grain of salt because really searches from brand terms are, are from users who already know the brand, who already have affinity to it and who are likely to buy anyway. But it just means that we're not throwing this money away. We're actually making a good return of it still. Data and account health. Now, these are positive side effects of, of uh, brand campaigns. Okay, so the first one is account health. When you're advertising brand campaigns, you tend to get good CTRs and good quality scores. Now, if you're launching a new account, this can help start things on the right foot and make sure you've got good account health. I wouldn't use account health as a, a main reason for brand campaigns. I'd, I'd just say that it's a positive side effect of having them. It's probably not worth spending money just for the sake of that. In terms of data, you're going to get search time data. So you're going to see how people use your brand terms in searches. Um, this could really be useful for you to change ad copy in the future to make sure that you understand the users to uh, maybe try and target uh, people searching for specific products uh, without your brand as well. So this, this, the search term data can be really useful over time as you look into it and learn insights from it. You're going to get conversion data for Google's automated bidding systems. So if uh, this is especially good if you're launching a new account and you know if you don't have enough volume of conversions for Google to to get good automation data. These campaigns usually convert quite well. Uh, it can increase the volume of conversions and um, help Google Automation get to good results better, quicker, basically. Um, and you can layer factors like observation audiences, locations. Uh, observation audiences are a, a way of targeting, but they can be set to observations. If you're not familiar with this, beyond your keywords that you're targeting, you can also um, target um, audiences based on intent, on affinity, people who are interested in, you know, you have people who are movie lovers, people who are uh, fashion buyers, people who are luxury travelers. You can layer these audiences without actually specifically targeting them. But what this means that over time you're building data of the types of audiences that convert, the types of audiences that buy or that uh, fill in an inquiry form on your website. And so Taking that information, you can later use these audiences to target on the display network, on YouTube, on search ads, and better increase your um, return from the ads. So this is a really positive side effect of running brand campaigns. Now, 
this isn't so much a pro of brand campaigns, but a way to use brand campaigns. So say you weren't using brand campaigns, all the traffic for your brand term would usually go to your uh, homepage. And you know, when people search for your, um, for your brand, they'd be seeing the SEO title uh, and the SEO description that you've put, even though Google sometimes changes that. But you can't really A-B test title and descriptions to the best of my knowledge easily. Uh, and whereas with um, brand campaigns, you can uh, very quickly set up two or three ads and run them against each other, see which one gets better click-through rates, see which one gets better conversions. And if you found a, a, a solid winner, you can apply this to your SEO, um, to your SEO and to your actual homepage. Another thing you could do is once people click on the ad, you don't have to send them to the homepage. You can send them to any page on your website. You can even send them to a separate site if you wanted to, uh, even though, you know, you have to be careful with that. It probably needs to be in the same domain. It could be on a subdomain. But you could try different landing pages. And again, if you found a winning combination, if you found a landing page that converts much better than your homepage, you should probably learn from that and you should probably apply some of the elements from that landing page onto your homepage to get better conversions. So this is a really good way to A-B test um, different ad copy, different headlines and different landing pages to see which one yields the best results. So should you run brand campaigns? Should you not run them? This really depends on your company, how much budget you have for ads, how much competition you're facing and how much that competition is stealing, uh, you know, conversions and customers from you. Uh, but hopefully with all these elements in place, you should have better tools to make that decision. And one thing to keep in mind is that it's not like a complete black and white decision. There are many shades of black of uh, brand campaigns in terms of the amount of budget you want to plow into them. So say you're running ads at, uh, I don't know, five grand a month and you're considering brand campaigns, then you can definitely dip your toes into the water with um, running brand campaigns at 100 or 200 pounds a month to see what that gives you. And if you're happy with the results, you can increase, you can decrease, you can pause them completely. So it's definitely something worth trying, especially if your brand has search volume. Uh, I hope this has been useful. If you have any comments, any questions, just um, put them in the comments below. I'll try to respond as soon as I can. Thanks.